Today's video is sponsored by Lockit, a home insurance startup based in the UK. Stay tuned to find out more. If you don't already have Home Assistant up and running, go check out my previous video, which will teach you exactly how to do that. If, however, you have it set up, this video is something I wish someone had shown me right from the beginning. This is everything you should learn as soon as you've done setup to make sure that you're getting the most out of Home Assistant, and I'm going to use the coolest example ever to teach you how to do these things. Check this out. The music's following me around the house! You might be thinking to yourself, I have a wife, she won't like this. Well one, you won't have a wife for long if you're getting into Home Assistant. But two, you could use geofencing as a condition that says if the wife is out the house, then run these things. If the wife is in the house, don't run these things. Simple as that. In exactly 12 minutes and 55 seconds, I can teach you how to do exactly this and ensure that no woman ever considers you to be a viable sexual partner ever again. Hello darkness, my old friend. Home assistant makes women cross their legs. <laughs> there is one caveat I should mention, and that is you will need Spotify Premium for this to work. Spotify Free looks like it will work, and then doesn't. You don't realize for several hours. You cry a lot. Don't do it. Let's do this. So we're gonna click the username in the bottom left. We're gonna scroll down until we can find advanced mode. We're gonna click the little button here, and that's advanced mode enabled. We're then gonna go to settings, and then we're gonna go to add-ons. And we're going to search in the add-on store specifically for Terminal and SSH. You click on that, and then click on the install button. That'll install Terminal and SSH. Once installed, you'll need to start the service, and then you should be able to open Web UI, which of course you can't, because it sucks. I think it sucks. Just go back, give it a second or two, and eventually when you click Web UI, you should get a terminal window that you can start to type into. You're going to want to type exactly the same as I do, wget space hyphen zero space hyphen space https colon double slash get dot hacks dot xyz space funny line thing space bash space minus and then press enter. I shall paste exactly what you need to type in the description for this video. Once it's downloaded, you just need to type in HA space HA space restart and press enter. <laughs> this will restart Home Assistant. A few minutes later. Once Home Assistant restarts, you want to go to settings and then to devices and services, add integration, and then type in here hacks. You'll then need to tick each of these boxes to confirm that you're not a massive simpleton. Once you've confirmed you're not a massive simpleton, press submit. It just works! So all the cool unofficial Home Assistant integrations are on GitHub. So you now need to tie your GitHub account to Home Assistant by clicking the link to visit GitHub. If you don't have a GitHub account, you'll need to sign up for one now. Otherwise, you log into GitHub and you will be presented with a device activation window. Go back to Home Assistant, copy the authorization code from Home Assistant and stick it into GitHub, press continue, and then authorize hacks. Consider yourself hacked, that's it. You have installed hacks and you can now access the hacks community and download some stuff. To finish setting up base mode, we're gonna go to settings, into add-ons. We're gonna go to add-on store. We're gonna click on file editor and then install. And once it's installed, we're going to click the start button to start the service. And then we're going to tick the box that says show in sidebar. 
This gives us a nice handy little shortcut on the left anytime we want to grow our virginity a little bit further and stop our wives talking to us all together. I will take a shovel to your head! Isn't that right, wife? Yes! Beast mode complete. Completely, mate. So I know every YouTuber says, please don't skip this sponsored segment, but seriously, this could save you money just simply for using Home Assistant. And that's not like an exaggeration or a half truth. Lockit Insurance or a home insurance provider who will give you potentially money off your bill simply for ticking a box that says, I use Home Assistant when you're going through your quotation process. You could say I use Ring or I use Nest video doorbells or I use security cameras in my house and basically you just tick them as you go and it actually gives you a quote that takes those things into account. Lockit are also now getting into the game themselves and they want to turn your house into the home alone house. Lockit have created their own Alexa skill, which enables you to create a routine that says, if the mobile phone with Lockit installed on it is out of the house, and a motion sensor in or around my property is triggered, then make these weird conversations happen where a woman asks her fella if he wants to go and check to see if there's a burglar, and take this with you. Sounds very threatening. And it also says, I'm gonna call the police, and it actually is really convincing. I've just tested it, and it's awesome. It's called Lock It Occupancy, and it's definitely worth checking out. You can use this feature even if you don't intend on going with Lock It Insurance. You just install the Lock It Insurance app, which I'll link in the description, and then from there, you can actually enable it and get Alexa to pretend that you're in your house when you're not. Very cool. Lockit are always looking for ways to improve security in people's homes, so if you want to give this thing a go and you're struggling with it at any point, Lockit are actually looking for feedback on this. It's still an experimental feature, and I think, from what I gather, it only works with your phone if your phone has gone out the house. I think with further improvements, they'll have it working with multiple phones. Anyway, back to the tutorial. To install Alexa Media Player, just go to Hacks, click on Integrations, explore and download repositories, and then search for Alexa Media Player. Click on that, and then click download. Click download again, and then if you come back out of Alexa Media Player, you'll see it's pending a restart to conduct that installation. Come back out of Hacks again, and you'll see you've got the pending restart where you can press navigate, and then you can restart Home Assistant from here. Always a good idea to check the configuration is green, so you know it's going to reboot OK, and then press the restart button to restart. Once Home Assistant reboots, click Settings, go to Devices and Services, Add Integration, and type in here Alexa Media. Click on it, and you should get a wizard in a moment where you can fill in your Amazon information. So you just need to put in your Amazon username and your email address, the usual one for logging into your Alexa account, and then your password for the same. And just where it says Amazon region, you'll need to change that to be whatever locale you are in. If you're in the UK, it's amazon.co.uk. If you're in the US, it's obviously amazon.com. You can probably just now press submit, but I found it keeps putting in my external Home Assistant URL in this field here, and for whatever reason, it doesn't work for me. I had to change it out for my internal URL, which is this one at the top of the screen. Once you press submit, you'll be faced with an Amazon page so that you can confirm to good old Jeff Bezos that you want to allow access to your Amazon Echoes. Bezos in space. If you've enabled two-step verification, which you absolutely should do for security, you should enter it now. Once the process is complete, you can then put each of your Amazon Echoes in the relevant rooms. And this is well worth doing because it keeps Home Assistant all nice, neat and tidy. Once you've got them all added, if you go back to your overview screen, you'll see that your echoes are all listed in your dashboard. And you can finally see all of your artwork and what's going on on each individual echo in your house. Completely, mate. Sorry to interrupt, but if you're enjoying this tutorial, if it's useful to you, please do me a huge favor and just hit that subscribe button. It honestly changes whether I'm able to do this for a living or not able to do this for a living. That'd be really appreciated. On with the show. 
To do this, we're going to go to Settings, into Devices and Services, Add Integration, and we're going to search for the Spotify integration. Click on that, and you'll be asked for a name, an auth client ID, and an auth client secret. To get those, all you need to do is go to developer.spotify.com, go to Dashboard, accept the terms of service, and then create an app. The app name and the description don't really matter a great deal. I'm just going to call it Paul's Home Assistant. I'm going to put in the app description something to the effect of for personal use. Uh, all you have to do then is click I understand and agree with Spotify's developer terms and then click create. Here go to edit settings and you need to change the redirect URI. You need to add one in. And that redirect URI is as follows https colon double slash my dot home hyphen assistant dot io forward slash redirect forward slash o auth and once again i'll put that in the description for you to copy in put that in press add and then press save if we now go to show client secret we can take a note of both the client id and the client secret to be able to copy and paste into home assistant so we'll start out with a name we're going to copy paul's home assistant we're going to stick that into the top. We're going to take next the client ID. We're going to copy that and paste that into the client ID. And then we're going to take the client secret. We're going to copy that. And then we're going to paste that into the client secret. And then press add. You'll then be asked to verify you want to go ahead. Just press agree. And then link account. And then choose an area for Spotify. Again, doesn't need to go in a room, but uh, I'm mental. <laughs> So you can now see we've got access to all of the Spotify information and controls. And if I go to my overview page, I've now got access to control Spotify, which I didn't have before. Awesome. That's Spotify all set up. Completely, mate. To install Spotcast, we're going to go back to hacks. We're going to go to integrations and then explore and download repositories. I'm going to now search for Spotcast click on it and then click download click download again and it's going to download the files for spotcast to home assistant if we now back out of spotcast you'll see that once again we've got a pending restart so we just back out again click navigate and as i said before it's a good idea to just check the configuration before restarting and restart and then unlike Alexa Media Player, it doesn't install in the usual way of going to settings and then devices and services and add integration. That doesn't work. You'll find if you actually search for Spotcast, it will tell you that you need to update your configuration.yaml file. If you actually click the open documentation link here, you can scroll down the page to access exactly what it is we need to copy and paste into our YAML file. So copy everything under single account to your clipboard, and then we're going to go back to Home Assistant Click on File Editor, we go into the configuration.yaml file, and then we just need to paste the contents of our clipboard anywhere at the bottom of this sheet. Don't worry about saving the document yet, we need to fill out the sp underscore dc and sp underscore key fields. In order to do that, you need to open a new incognito tab, visit the following address, open.spotify.com. You need to accept cookies and then you need to log in to your Spotify account. Once you're logged in, press F12 on your keyboard, which will open up a developer view. You need to then go to the Applications tab and click open.spotify.com under Cookies. If you then search for SP and then scroll down a bit, you'll find your SP key and your SP underscore DC. You need to get both of these copied in to your configuration.yaml file in the appropriate spaces. The SP underscore DC key is a bit awkward, it goes off the screen. You'll need to get your cursor in the box and press Control A to get all of it selected before copying it. Very, very long. That's what she said. Paste it in. We now save that document. Go to Developer Tools. Click check configuration again, make sure everything's okay, and then press restart. And then restart again.
So the final step is to create our automation. If you go into settings and then automations and scenes and then click create automation, we want to start with an empty automation. In here, we're gonna add a trigger and in my case, it is a device and my device is called Photography Studio Motion Sensor. And my trigger is gonna be if it starts to detect motion. Now we only want this to run if it isn't already running. We don't want it to start the music again if it detects motion and we've already got it playing. So we're gonna add a condition that says if the state of my blue echo dot in the photo studio is standby, then run the automation. If it's playing, this won't run. So we now need to add an action and we want to call a service and that service is Spotcast. Now Spotcast will allow you to choose which device is going to play and how it's going to play. So we're gonna tick the box to say device name and in here we need to put the exact name of the echo dot in exactly the case sensitive setting that we have here, blue echo dot photo studio. That's the device that will play. The URI is what it's going to play and this can be Spotify colon artist or it can be Spotify colon playlist, or it can be Spotify colon track, depending on what it is you want it to play. I'm gonna play a playlist. We just need one more colon, and then we need to find the actual URI from Spotify. So if you open up Spotify in a new window, find the playlist you're interested in and right click on it, and go to share, and then copy link to playlist. You can do that for artists, you can do it for songs, you can do it for playlists. If we go back to Home Assistant, and then paste that onto the end. All you need is this big string of characters. You don't need all the stuff from the beginning. So we're gonna delete all of that up to the HTTPS. We now have Spotify playlist and then the complete unique URI. You can now test this by pressing run and you should hear it playing. That's now playing in the other room. And if you want to, you can tell it to do other things such as start on a random song and to shuffle the playlist and even set the volume of the player before it starts playing, which is utterly genius. I press save now, it'll do all of those things the next time the motion sensor detects motion. If you instead want a speaker to take over as you enter a room like I showed in my demonstration, all you need to do is create exactly the same thing again, but this time add a second condition, and that is that the state of Spotify is playing And this will ensure that it only happens if Spotify is playing. If you don't put this condition in, it will start playing music every time you enter a room. And this time the action is nothing. If you empty these fields out, then what will happen instead is Spotcast will just take over and start playing whatever is already playing on a different speaker. You hit save now, that's exactly what's gonna happen. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. That will tell YouTube's algorithms it was a good video and more people should see it. If you want to see some more of this guy, hit that subscribe button and ding that bell. If you ding the bell, it lets YouTube know you want to be notified when I upload videos. These incredible people here are my patrons from Patreon. Without them, this would not exist. I would not be doing this for a living. I would be doing something else. If you want to be one of those incredible people, you can do that at either Patreon or buy me a one-off beer at PayPal. And either way, I would genuinely love you forever. These are my Facebooks and my Twitters and my Instagrams and my TikToks too. Come and hang out there and we can be best friends. See you next time.